What if I told you that you can make your images sharper by blurring them? Sounds crazy, right? But it's true. In this tutorial, I'll show you a simple technique to enhance the details and contrasts of your photos using two blur filters in Photoshop. And you'll learn how to upscale your photos using AI and enhance them even more with the HDR effect with a click. Just keep watching to the end to create your own PSD file that you can create once and use forever. Let's start by creating a new document. Set the document width to 3000 pixels, height to 2000 pixels, with 8-bit RGB color mode. Then click Create. Now let's import our image. You can download these images for free from the video description below. After importing your image, convert it to a smart object again to avoid any errors later on. Rename this layer to Before so we can compare it with the final result. Now press Ctrl plus J to duplicate it. This is the layer we will apply the effect on, so let's rename it to HDR. Then change its blending mode to Vivid Light. Add an invert adjustment layer above it and clip mask it to the HDR layer. Using invert with the Vivid Light Blend mode will create this grayish result. We're going to select our layer and apply the Surface Blur filter from here. By increasing both radius and threshold, the image details will start to pop out like that. You can play with the sliders to control how many details you want. And this is the result I'm looking for. Don't worry about these spots, they'll be fixed later. Finally, let's duplicate the Before layer. And while selecting the duplicated layer, I'll head up to the Filter Gallery. Choose the Diffuse Glow filter from the Distort folder and set the values to 0, 4, and 19. This will boost the highlights of our image, making them even brighter. Highlights, if you don't know, are the brightest areas in the image. And by applying this filter, the highlights will get even more bright. So what we did right here, we made a gray map that brings out the details of our image. And we also created a high dynamic range effect by darkening the shadows and brightening the highlights. Now let's group our layers and then change the group blending mode to Overlay. This will finally create this perfect HDR effect. And here is the before and after. We can add an extra layer of toning to make our image even more stunning. Simply, let's take a duplicated layer using Ctrl plus J from the before layer, then drag it to the very top, like that. And from the filters menu, let's apply the second blur filter, which is Gaussian Blur. I'll simply set the radius to 30 pixels. Then I'll add a black and white layer to desaturate my image. Don't forget to clip mask it. Also, add an invert adjustment layer and clip mask it as well. This invert layer will reverse the colors to their opposite. For example, this white spot will be inverted to black after using invert. Now let's hold the shift key then group the three layers. Give a name to the group and change its blending mode to Overlay. This will create an extra HDR tone to our effect. We can adjust its intensity by lowering the group opacity like this. I usually keep it below 50%. And here is our final result. Don't forget to save your project for any later use. Just give it any name and click Save. And now let's move on to the next step. To apply this effect on any other image, just double click on any smart object thumbnail to open it. And once you're inside the smart object, import your new image there. Press Ctrl plus S to save it. Then get back to your main document. And here we go. The effect is fully applied to a new image with a single press of a button. In some rare scenarios due to image quality, you may see these halos in the resulting image. And to fix it, you'll simply need to double click the surface blur filter of the HDR layer to open it. Then lower the radius and threshold values until it's gone and click OK. Here is the before and after. And here's a quick comparison between using the regular sharpen filter and our HDR effect. Now let's have another quick example. Just open the smart object by double clicking its thumbnail. Add your image inside it and press Ctrl plus S. Go back to the main document and see how the effect is applied automatically. You can adjust the HDR intensity by changing the surface blur filter value as before. You can also adjust the tone by changing the HDR tone group opacity like this. And here's the result. But wait, 
What if you have a very low quality image like this one? This image is only 1300 pixels by 900 pixels, which is very poor quality. You might say that we should upscale it by just changing its dimensions, or even by using Adobe's neural filters. It may sound like an interesting idea, but after testing these methods versus some other free AI image upscalers, I found that those new AI image upscalers are way better than what Adobe can do. So let's try one of them. We'll simply need to upload our low quality image from here and set the scale to three or four, then click submit. You can find some AI free website links in the video description below. Now let's download the output image and open it with Photoshop. AI image upscalers just increase the image quality by adding more pixels and filling in the missing information, producing very high quality and detailed images. As you can see, this image is now more than 5,000 pixels with very high quality details. Now let's apply the HDR effect using our premium Photoshop action. I will run the action from here and wait a few seconds. You can join us on Patreon and download this amazing HDR action and all our YouTube projects. After running the action, here is the final result. In some images, you may find your highlights area is way too bright, just like that. To restore it, you'll simply need to disable the filter of the highlights layer. And to optimize the output image even more, I will increase the HDR layer's surface blur values to make it sharper. And finally, I'll increase the tone group opacity to make it more vivid. Now, let's drag the old low quality image over here to compare between both of them. I'll just resize it to see the difference. Here is our old low quality image. And here is the upscaled high quality sharp image. Just look and see how detailed and high quality our image is. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new. Don't forget to check out this tutorial next, where I'll show you how to vectorize your photos using Photoshop and export them to Illustrator. It's a very cool technique that you don't want to miss. Thanks for watching and see you soon.